part two of a disinformed citizenry. Fairly brief tail end. The third error, as I said, was not to imagine, examine the connection between Islamic extremists and the protests, Islamic extremism and the protests, which will be a significant problem for Americans in the commitment we have made and the way it is coming to fruition. The fourth is the allegations of atrocities that were not verified. And in fact, we're taken verbatim from the very people who wanted to obtain foreign military invention. The TNC head told a sympathetic fellow in, in Switzerland uh, massive exaggerations, and anyone who's followed the TNC's pronouncements can find that the vast majority of them have been incorrect. That is to say, in many cases, lies. Uh, they've reported to have captured government, uh, important government officials many times and without basis that various agreements and conclusions were made that all turned out to be not true. And the media has printed every single lie of the TNC zealously and with relish, uh, even after their credibility had been completely uh, destroyed. Uh, and this is another question of who makes these decisions to roll with anything one side says and to completely cast aspersions on anything the other side says. In other words, the expert uh, testimony that was received by the International Criminal Court and the United Nations was entirely uh, just pulled out of a hat. They claimed that tens of thousands had already been killed, that thousands had already been raped, and in fact there was no evidence of rape whatsoever, according to Doctors Without Borders and another uh, human rights group such as Amnesty International on approximately June 27th. Also, they went to the lady who claimed she knew 600 ladies had been raped and uh, she couldn't produce a single one. <clears throat> and um, the total casualties in the initial days of the uprising, uh, I would put at around 350, certainly less than 1,000, certainly more than 150. So these figures were just completely crazy. They were orders of magnitude out of proportion and in some cases non-existent. Also the claims of heavy weapon use was never uh, substantiated, but it was quickly accepted into the official records. There was no confirmation of any of this and it was put in the official record. Uh, claims of mercenaries uh, could not be established. Uh, now I'm not saying that any one given fact isn't is true or not. What I'm saying is that they are all needing verification and should not be just willy-nilly accepted on face value. Um, it corrupts this data that I'm describing moving through the system to the public. <clears throat> the claims have no basis. No mercenaries, no rates. And of course, the United States is the largest employer of mercenaries in the world. We call them contractors, but that's exactly what a mercenary is. He's a contractor in military services. We also have one of the worst rape records of any military. Um, so as absolute power corrupts absolutely, faulty information corrupts decision-making and public perception leads to public demanding that bad policies be implemented. So after the initial insurrection and these key uh, faults and corruptions of data that entered into the system, uh, it snowballed. Uh, first, uh, Libyan investments in Africa were initially demonized, were said that Gaddafi had bought off Africa. Once Gaddafi was dead and the TNC was in power, articles are beginning to come out eulogizing uh, Libya's role as a primary investor in Africa with virtually no strings attached and many phil philanthropic projects. Building mosques does not make you a, a corrupter of a country. Investing in the hospitality industry in Kenya, these were good investments in many cases. And Africa, as well as Libya, were decapitated by the destruction of the Libyan government because Libya was the only country in Africa with sufficient free cash flow to uh, envision African projects that weren't uh, dependent on Western aid, which has been caught in a vicious cycle of corruption and mismanagement. <clears throat> so, we had Libyan investments in Africa demonized until the deed was done, Gaddafi was dead, and the country had been destroyed, and now they are beginning to come out with saying, yes, the Africans uh, uh, benefited from uh, Gaddafi's largesse. 
Okay. Second, no mention was ever made that Libya actually took care of its population better than even in the West. For the bottom 20%, certainly, because they had universal education, up in, including uh, university uh, and socialized medicine and food controls. When Tunisia and Egypt rioted, it was partly because of the price of food. In Libya, food c price controls were maintained. Uh, uh, bread was extremely inexpensive. It was subsidized. Third, the potential for civilian loss of life at the hands of the Libyan army was entirely hypothetical, and real research would have shown, in my view, at least the most 1,000 civilians would have lost their lives. The intervention that has led to the loss of 30,000 to 50,000 lives, according to the TNC a month ago. By not mentioning Libya's education and medical and industrial achievements, the public has no interest in preserving them, thinking Libya like Afghanistan. Uh, 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 structural hellhole, and NATO's destruction of many elements of infrastructure struck no chord in Western sentiment. My conclusion is by withholding the fact that Libya was the most advanced country in Africa, statistically, even when balancing data by looking at the other oil producers exclusively, such as Algeria and Nigeria, and adjusting for all these factors, by withholding this fact, all of these prejudices were made possible. The fact that this data was suppressed is extremely serious. The same was true for Iraq. However, in Iraq's case, he initiated a long and bloody war with Iran. In Iraq's case, I cannot speak to the level of support or the validity of the right not to be invaded. I, too, am prejudiced against Saddam Hussein because I was not permitted to know the other side. I was not permitted to make up my own mind. I simply don't know because I was probably given faulty information. That is disinformation. That is propaganda. In the second half of the conflict, as NATO saw, they were in danger of losing if they continued to at uh, least uh, 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 maintain a pretense of civilian protection, they stepped up the pressure and more and more collateral damage started to occur. Until at the end, NATO leveled an entire city of 120,000 that, that was inhabited, a serious and massive crime against humanity on the scale of Srebrenica. I would very much like to have serious scientific credible data about how many buildings were destroyed by NATO. <clears throat> My first tip-off that all was not, as I was being told, other than Libya's high level of development, which I discovered in my first day of research by going to uh, Wikipedia and uh, various statistical abstracts. Um, let's see here. Was the fact that the TNC claimed they had 8,000 fighters near Benghazi, and then, of course, General Yunus defected and claimed he had three brigades. His three brigades all disappeared. They did not participate in the rebellion, as far as I can tell. It would have been close to 15,000 men, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, in fact, I was only able to account for about 1,800 fighters total. Um, so if you look at the population, it shows very tepid support. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we had a number of data corruption elements. Uh, and the question I have is where and when and who and why and how. Um, and I've laid out those uh, questions, and I hope people will answer these questions so I can develop this further. Uh, so uh, what are the uh, data corruption elements and what are the consequences? We said, uh, as I said, poverty rate of 7%. It was distorted to be one-third. Therefore, it characterized Libya as being dirt poor. Therefore, John Stewart made a lot of jokes that weren't funny at all. They were completely inaccurate based on a stereotype and misconception. Education rate was the highest in Africa. The medical service is the best in Africa. The consequence was we destroyed many a piece of these infrastructure because no one in the West took them seriously, uh, especially you know, the population. Uh, their financial stewardship was very high, uh, but they was portrayed that Gaddafi had enriched himself at the cost of his people, when in fact Gaddafi was one of the least uh, 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 kleptocratic of uh, the African uh, leaders uh, in the world in terms of what was left after he was deposed of $200 billion in sovereign investment funds that was, uh, through disinformation, characterized as his personal money to make people jealous of Libya and uh, uh, kick them instead of saying that they had a much better economy than we did. African altruism. In actual fact, uh, Gaddafi's Libya showed a high degree of altruistic investment in Africa. It was characterized as bribing the African Union. Uh, the uh, uprising 
uh, was characterized as a mass breakout of progressive reformers. But the original uprising was really families of Islamic radicals, many of whom had been freed through a reconciliation process initiated by Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi. And now the consequence is that we have jihadists and al-Qaeda uh, uh, in very strong positions in Libya. In fact, the al-Qaeda flag was flying on the original outbreak point, the Benghazi court, along with the rebel flag or the TNC flag. And we have the media now apologizing uh, for them. They're apologists, I should say. There is a characterization of Libya as having an evil government. Uh, there is a, a characterization of Libya of having a terrorist government. In fact, Libya supported all independence movements all over the world, including Nelson Mandela when we had him on our terrorist watch list. Gaddafi abandoned war against the West in the late 80s. It was a fairly symmetrical conflict between uh, revolutionary movements in the developing world uh, and the West. In fact, of course, they were vastly outgunned. So when they bomb the cities of Libya, we feel nothing because our cities never get bombed by airplanes. But when they when they retaliate by bombing one of our civilian airliners, we are horrified and ready to kill the entire country for it. When in fact, the action is no less or more egregious than bombing civilians via an air force. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's still, even in my own blood, I'm conditioned to wince when I say that. that there's something, because I'm scared of dying in an airline uh, bombing. But I'm not scared of being bombed in San Francisco. Uh, so emotionally, they've got us. Gaddafi abandoned this war against the West in the late 80s. You know, he's promised improved relations, as I said, after he voluntarily disarmed and the head of the CIA program to get bin Laden. Uh, Scheuer described Gaddafi as hell on wheels against Al Qaeda. Now, what has happened as a result of all of this is that all countries are running, not walking towards Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Soldiers' lives are considered expendable by NATO because it's an evil terrorist government. That's a caricature. Therefore, the soldiers working for it are Gaddafi henchmen and thugs. In fact, they're just normal servicemen like in any country. Uh, and therefore, NATO doesn't have to count their killing of the armed forces towards their stated goal of not harming civilians, which is a charade in itself. Forgive me for uh, uh, going on the offense here. <clears throat> But I'm trying to describe the harmful effects of disinformation. Not every fact that I state will end up holding up, but uh, the overall pattern is there. Americans' opinions are so hardened by this cocoon of disinformation, this bubble where we are told the world looks a certain way, when in fact it doesn't look that way at all. Uh, so they may never realize what they have done and what has, to, has been done to them. Be, what has been done to them is that by these actions, the West is hated and feared all over the world right now, and it's snowballing. And we will be laughed at if Al-Qaeda and jihadists run Libya, unless we have some sinister motive to ally with Al-Qaeda and jihadists, which some have speculated are being used to attack Russia and China later on with, which I think is crazy. Uh, but the longer I see what's going on in Libya, the less crazy it seems. Another consequence has been the rape of educated women due to uh, the Sharia law declaration. And she, there's a very much controversial part of the Quran that says that if you defeat an enemy, that you can have sex with the wives of the enemy. And this is uh, any Islamic person you'll talk to will right away repudiate that because Sharia is a double-edged sword. If it's in the hands of irresponsible people, just like Judaism described the uh, liquidation of whole races in the Old Testament, this doesn't mean you should do things that in the original text one could do. It's uh, just, just, that's why we have priests and uh, ministers and mullahs and uh, so forth to help us understand religious texts. So uh, there's certainly no sensible Muslim would encourage raping educated women uh, but in fact, this is what has been uh, uh, said is going on in Tripoli now as retaliation uh, by these fundamentalist extremists. And what's going to consequence of these is that we're going to lose our access to raw materials and new markets because these countries will not trust us after what we've done in Libya. And then there's been the killing and maiming of thousands of civilians, uh, which has been completely denied by NATO, incredibly. And again we, again, we will never be trusted again to be allowed to intervene, no matter how serious a conflict is, because uh, we abused our privileges in Libya. At least this is what I believe. Uh, now, we have taken a society that had not known war since 1943 and, ran, and it was a peaceful country. 
and rendered it into a strife torn civilization with enormous intertribal animosities, which have been completely fanned and whipped up, obviously, if the families of 1,200 people wiped out in a prison uprising in 93.